Mark Brandon Chopper Reed. I don't say she a pet at all. <laughs> One of Australia's most notorious and infamous criminals. Tell us what happened to your ears. You're getting a bit personal there, aren't you? <laughs> if I shot you in the kneecap or an A, we're entering Logie territory. <laughs> Sydney Collins was a biker. And in 1992, in Tasmania, he was shot in the chest, in Chopper's car, with Chopper's gun, which was then found buried in Chopper's back garden. Sidney Collins survived that shooting, but 10 years later, he disappeared and has never been seen since. I think he benefited from, from the experience, personally, like they got shot. Oh, I, I think he's a dead set psychopath. Sid Collins has been in hiding Guys, since Chopper's shot and narrowly anyone. missed killing him. I've never been scared of Chopper. He's always worried me a little, but I've never been scared of him. He shot me, he nearly killed me. Now, two weeks before Chopper died of terminal liver cancer, back in 2013, he confessed on 60 Minutes Australia to four murders, one of which was Sidney Collins. But this confession has been disputed by many people. So going back to 1992, in Tasmania, Chopper Reed and Sidney Collins were apparently friends. And just five days after the famous interview with Renee Brack, where Chopper does the Russian roulette, and just five days later was when Chopper allegedly shot Sidney Collins. So known all over the world, Chopper is infamous now. His criminal activities range from murders, attempted murders, arsons, uh, robberies, uh, impersonating police officers, malicious woundings and all sorts of stuff. But he was very well known for robbing the heroin dealers of Melbourne and robbing drug dealers of their money. And of course, he famously asked for another prisoner to remove his ears in H Division in Pentridge uh, because he wanted to get out of there. So H Division in Pentridge was a notorious part of the prison which was apparently designed to break the spirit and the will of the prisoners in there. And apparently it was very inhumane. So Chopper getting his ears cut off was his way to get out of there. I started a group, a gang called the Van Gogh Club. And to get into it, you had to cut off, cut off an, an ear, you know. So although Chopper initially claimed to have as many as 19 murder victims, there's only evidence pointing to one actual murder that he genuinely committed. And that was the murder of Sammy the Turk Ozakam. And Chopper actually got acquitted of this murder on grounds of self-defense. Now, Chopper's philosophy was never let the truth get in the way of a good story. So with that in mind, you throws a bit of doubt over some of his criminal claims. But it was whilst in Tasmania in 1992 that he was arrested for the shooting of Sidney Collins. Now, while Sidney Collins was near death in the hospital, Chopper was gambling at a casino and drinking. As he left the casino, armed response, armed police turned up, pointed the guns at Chopper. Chopper answered them with his normal sense of humor. What's this for, my tax assessment? So initially, Sidney Collins never pointed the finger at Chopper and said it was an unknown assailant who shot him. But a few days later, Sidney Collins changed the story and said he was sitting in the back of Chopper's car Chopper was in the front seat, turned around, shot him in the chest, and the bullet actually went in his chest, ricocheted off a rib, went through his colon, and cut the top off of his kidney as well. He then claims that Chopper drove him to the hospital, which Chopper disputed that. Chopper claims he didn't do that, saying, why would he shoot someone and drive him to the hospital? It's, it's insulting. I mean, it, they're saying that... You know, I'm the only government that, that supplies a medical plan. Not only do I shoot you, but I take you to hospital as well. So Chopper was initially charged with attempted murder. This was then dropped to GBH, and he was actually sentenced to an indefinite sentence. So he had no idea of when he was getting out. A bit like in Britain, you have the IPP sentence. He actually ended up serving five and a half years for that. Now, Chopper had apparently been quite close with Sidney Collins because he'd apparently paid for the wedding dress for Sidney Collins' fiancée for their upcoming wedding. And as Chopper was now sitting in prison, he wrote a letter to Sidney, and the letter read, Dear Sid, I regret to inform you that I'll be unable to attend your forthcoming wedding due to pending legal matters. Wishing you a speedy recovery. Regards, Mark. So, 
with various contracts on Chopper's life. He never seemed to be that concerned about the, the hits that he had on him. Police have told Reid his life has been threatened by motorcycle gangs in Hobart, but the notorious criminal says he's not afraid of a payback. I'll die of old age waiting for those knuckleheads to kill me. So on his release from the prison, Chopper was doing his uh, stand-up shows, his tours. Chopper then claimed that Sid Collins, this, this is 10 years after the first shooting, he said Sidney Collins turned up at one of the shows asking for Chopper to sign an autograph on a bit of memorabilia. Apparently Sidney Collins said no hard feelings, let bygones be bygones. And uh, Chopper claims that he killed Sidney Collins that day or around that time and uh, buried him near a football pitch. What did you do with the body? Well, it was stuck him in a hole and filled the hole in. So the actual day Sidney Collins disappeared, he'd gone to collect an underworld debt and his truck was actually found in a small town near a place called Casino and he's never been heard or seen of since. And in 2014, there was a book published by a man called Adam Shand called The Real Chopper. So the book points out and separates a lot of the facts and fiction in many of Chopper's claims. And the book states that many of, many of Chopper's criminal claims and murders that he admitted to were unsubstantiated. And there was no evidence at all that he was involved in any of them. Like I said before, the only evidence was with the one murder of Sammy the Turk, which he was acquitted of, but it was self-defense. And in the book, it also claims that Chopper was nowhere near the area that Sidney Collins went missing on that particular day. So although Chopper has obviously embellished and made up some of his, some of his stories, he still has now international fame and notoriety and many fans. I personally have always been interested in him, quite fascinated by him. Uh, his sense of humour comes across quite funny and uh, the way he tells his stories. And the film, I, I really did enjoy the film Chopper. And back in 2009, I was actually in touch with Chopper and his wife, Margaret, because they were planning on doing a UK tour uh, of his stand-up show and where he goes around talking. And um, we had a few conversations about him coming over to the UK and I wanted to see if he'd do a, tour, uh, a show in my hometown because I'd already put on a few shows with a couple of uh, celebrities and ex-criminals. So we were looking at doing some more. So we got in touch with Chopper. And at the same time, uh, Billy Boy Martindale who was, uh, was friends with Chopper, who's Lou Yates' son, uh, he contacted me and then we started to talk. This was via Facebook, then we exchanged numbers and he would occasionally ring Chopper when, when I was with him. Yeah, this was, this was 2009 and sadly, Billy Boy Martindale was murdered shortly after that. But Billy Boy has a book out and Chopper Reed was actually promoting Billy's book. There's a few photographs of Chopper holding the book up um, to promote it for Billy. But that's another story. But anyway, I hope you liked the video. Hope everyone's well. Uh, please leave a comment. Please like, share, and please subscribe if you haven't already. It means the world to me. All the feedback and uh, all the shares and everything. And I uh, hope everyone's well. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you.